Hello and welcome to episode 172 of Nuggets Dungeon Terrain. This is the second part in a series where I'm creating some modular post-apocalyptic terrain, in particular for a zombie dungeon crawler. So starting with the sinkhole room, I'm going to go through all the 14 tiles and explain some of the features and some of the techniques that we use to create each one. Plus a little bit about strategy and the reason for the design in the first place. So here we see the sinkhole room. A large hole has broken away here. Maybe there's a car park underneath or maybe these pipes eroded away the limestone underneath and created a proper sinkhole. Someone has added the support. This is a really good tactical piece where the players need to get across this section here. However, if they were surrounded by zombies, they also have the option of jumping across to here, especially those that have skills related to athleticism. So, pretty happy with this piece. Uh, there's certainly enough space to add all the zombies that you need to add. A couple of little um, bits of plant terrain just to break it up. This corner tile is the first one that I made. It set up the proportions for all the other tiles to fit to. So it has less features. The extra space however makes it a good opportunity to place one of these extra large creatures. Here's another big open space, but one of my favourites because I really like the way that this fence turned out. You can see the parts of it that have been tipped right over. It's quite a firm material, it's from the fly, fly wire from an old project. And I like the way that it spans across this area here. And the way that the rubble and the attempts to barricade integrate well with this smaller broken down fence on this side. This is the piece that has the space that goes down into a cellar or a basement. When I made this I was thinking about the storage underneath the pub where they bring the kegs in. It has large flat areas like this outside in the alleyway or the street. Someone's written in blood. Keep out on the upside of this and I have a support is a little bit hard to pick up on the camera back here holding it open so it seems a little bit more realistic and some faded signs on this notice board. This room I think will work particularly well because some of the characters have skills where they can push a zombie back which includes into a space that will take them out of play. Using this not only as a barrier, but as a weapon with some of the skills. So I rescued this car that I made out of polymer clay in a previous episode and this bonnet here and a couple of the other features to make it look like some area where people had abandoned cars or car parts. I guess you could make a whole set up themed in a junkyard but I like that there are parts here that you could potentially scavenge and the way that this large car breaks up the space quite a bit making it a challenge for the different characters to negotiate and a good space for them to become separated and surrounded. You could certainly use the car as high ground again not particularly stable as is the bonnet This is actually a cross junction so the different players can go from one of these four sides and have three other places that they could go. One of the more basic ones, I just took a couple of larger blocks of XPS foam 
and made it look like the support structures of a taller building next door had fallen down into the space collapsing some of the walls there's still plenty of room for the players and the zombies to move through of course there's also opportunities for high ground and a couple of spaces somebody's attempted to barricade some of these sections here see these concrete blocks next to this cone cones just made out of the lid of a glue container and here's some of the tools and materials that would have gone into creating the rest of the barrier had not these people been overrun or scared away created the sledgehammer using a bead and this crowbar using a tiny bit of polymer clay and the doors are all made out of XPS foam here's a look from the front and you can see to scale suits pretty well when someone's standing behind it it's got this uh, central area still fits in well with the theme so that if you're facing something particularly nasty you can move to try and keep a gap away so I like the strategy that it adds even though it's a fairly open simple piece another sinkhole piece this time it's a corner section the characters can easily step across from one side to the other but as you can imagine if the room was suddenly filled up with zombies as you entered and these spaces were taken it's going to be quite a challenge to be able to fight your way across safely I rescued this dumpster from a previous set I really like it and I didn't want to have to make another one so I plonked that on one corner and filled one of the corners up with rubble a little piece of corrugated iron embedded in with the rocks makes it look really cool a couple of skulls added to the edges and this little bit of broken away fence that actually doesn't contact in the middle makes it look like at some point something bursts through it this is the flatbed from a truck I had a whole bunch of these from the two dollar shop that I ripped apart and some of them you can see in previous episodes like the abandoned military outpost I took all the wheels away to make it look like it hadn't been used for a long time a couple of additions of some dying plants kind of add to that effect as does the rust there's a footlocker at the end here it's just made out of XPS foam and some round pieces to make it look like some rusted pipes here's a look from this end the corrugated iron and the wire going across here kind of to make it look like barbed wire the advantage to this piece is that gives a really good opportunity for the players to gain high ground which gives an advantage in a lot of dungeon crawlers so if they get surrounded they still have this place where they can stand safely and fight from and maybe heal can fit four miniatures up here if you need to this checkpoint is probably the one that I'm the least happy with uh, I guess for the most part the sandbags are a decent scale I added this barrier from an old piece that I scavenged off which of course would fit exactly into one of these spaces but it's not a movable part its aim is actually just to create a space that you need to move around and potentially could protect yourself from I guess the thing that I like the least about it is I would like to have added more effects with some bodies and some gore but I knew that the more I laid out on the ground the less space there would be to actually place the miniatures so I had to compromise with it I like how some aspects of this pipe outlet area came to uh, the mesh the square mesh kind of looks like chicken wire 
and the fact that it already came damaged helped because then I was able to make it look like something had burst through parts of the fence the dried out mud effect coming out of the pipe I think is a little bit more realistic than filling it with some kind of resin or water effect and it looks particularly effective when you see the players on one side and the zombies on the other you can see where the strategy might come into it and of course while this is high ground it's not particularly stable so choosing to use that might end up not working in your favor this is a garden courtyard there's a gazebo or what's left of one in the middle and a few weeds are left I particularly like this bit of broken gate you can imagine that that might have been a barrier on one side that's been broken down and the old cracked pot plants in the corner now only weeds are growing out of them I enjoyed adding a little bit of extra uh, brown mud effect to show that maybe some more had been planted in the space but the thing I like most about this area is the fact that the characters can move through this middle space here you can actually fit two on and gain higher ground in the event that they're surrounded by a lot of zombies and finally the last straight piece section I scavenged this wall and these various parts here from another piece so the safe the two filing cabinets and the old cafe lounge a blocking this delivery door here and most of the rest of the area is lined by this corrugated iron which has taken quite a beating including this part where it's burst right through when I first put this together the corrugated iron stretched across quite tightly but as I painted it and it softened it became a bit saggy instead of cutting it and altering it I just added all of these different damage points and made sure it wasn't all facing the same direction including this side bit here finally here you can see that all of the pieces fit easily into one of these trays which then fits into my storage cupboard the ones that all have high consistent walls can stack on top of each other very easily and all of them can also stack on their ends on at least one of the sides quite safely and here is future project potential it'd be cool if you could let me know which of the rooms in particular you thought worked the best. In case you're wondering, the miniatures that I used almost all come from Zombicide. This is a miniature and terrain agnostic game that I created called Hunter Gatherer that I've been working on for a couple of years. On the weekend, I had a chance to play with my daughter. We ended up playing for about six hours pretty happy with how it works and I might share it in the near future. Until next time, I'll see you later.